I'm Dan, welcome to the channel. Today you join me sitting in my 2011 Ford Crown Victoria where I thought we may take a look at the uh, Carfax report to see what this little gem hides. So I can tell you it's five pages long. Not all bad news, but there is certainly some stuff in there that's uh, a little bit worrying. But let's start at the beginning and see where we end up. So I can confirm it is a genuine taxi. The VIN number is P7A, which is the long wheelbase. 2011, we had them as P7As as they run out of chassis numbers. Previous to that, they were P7Zeros. Always worth checking because they there are a lot of fake taxis out there. Just because it's painted yellow and has some New York taxi stickers put on it doesn't make it a real New York taxi. So if you're looking at one or you want to buy one, check the chassis number and that will tell you whether it is a genuine one or not. If you have any questions, send me a message, please ask. The car was purchased by the original owner in 2012. He owned it for seven years and seven months. Estimated miles driven per year was 59,344. Now I know New York is a massive place, but that is some amazing mileage. That must have been everywhere in New York. And it probably hasn't been to be fair, because it's huge. The last reported odometer reading, which would have been from its last inspection, was 396,062 miles. So what we do is we'll have a look because my car's got 410,000 on it. So that's a bit of a difference. So it might be the fact that it had an inspection and that was the end of that until the next inspection. So we'll look through and we'll see. So I can tell you it's not a salvage, junk, rebuilt, fire, flood, hail or lemon car. And I can confirm that the mileage according to this is correct. It's good. Page two. So the car was manufactured on the 1st of March 2011 and it was shipped to De Blassi Motors in Corona, New York on the 17th of the 1st 2012 where it was sold to another dealer on the 3rd of the 2nd 2012 and it went to City World Ford Lincoln Mercury Bronx New York it went for an inspection on the 15th of the 8th 2012 and it passed its emissions Whee! and then on the 16th of the 8th 2012 it had a safety inspection performed so it had an emissions inspections on the 15th of the 8th and a safety inspection on the 16th of the 8th. And on the 3rd of the 10th, 2012, it was sold. So that would have been sold to the one owner who is Max or who was Max and registered as R and G Taxis Incorporated. 5th of the 11th, 2012, the first registration was issued. It was registered as a taxi and it passed another safety inspection. 14th of the 2nd, 2013. At this point, it's got 28,438 miles. Pass another inspection. On the 23rd of the 2nd, 2013, registration issued or renewed, title or registered as a taxi, pass safety inspection. So all that first lot seems to have been done in Hollis, Motor Vehicle, New York Motor Vehicle Department, Hollis. Ah, and then on the 13th of the 6th, 2013, accident reported with another motor vehicle. Now, when you look around this car, there are scrapes, dents. The front was hanging off when I originally brought it. Um, and it had just been put back together with a little bit of electrical wire. So every time I used to drive, the bumper used to be flapping up and down like that because the fiberglass 
headlight holder had actually cracked and was loose. So I had to get that replaced. That was definitely one of them. The boot doesn't quite line up properly, so I did, and, and there's quite a lot of uh, cracks within the rear bumper. So I would also imagine that he's reversed into, or at the very least been driven into, by another car. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell me what the accident was, other than it is an accident reported with another motor vehicle. Page three. On the 14th of the 6th, 2013, it passed another emissions inspection. Hey. And on the 6th of the 9th, 2013, it had a manufacturer safety recall to do with the steering column shaft. Now, unfortunately, what it doesn't tell me was if this was actually repaired or not. So if there are any Ford people on here, or, or sorry, if there are any people, anybody that works at Ford in the USA and would be able to tell me if this did actually have the steering shaft replaced, I'm happy to give you the chassis number. Um, if somebody could check for me, that would be absolutely awesome. So... We will presume it's been done, although I cannot confirm. On the 17th of the 10th, 2018, uh, 2013, sorry, it racked up 81,288 miles and it passed another inspection. On the 7th of the 2nd, 2013, it was registration was issued or renewed title or registered as a taxi pass safety inspection and that was done at the new york motor vehicle department in hollis 18th of the 2nd 2014 at 110,864 miles it passed another inspection emissions inspection performed pass pass safety inspection hey on the 16th of the 6th 2014 it failed a safety inspection and it had clocked up 138,933 miles. Wow. And then on the same day, 16th of the 6th, 2014, at 138,946 miles, it passed its safety inspection. Whee! I don't know what that would have been. They, unfortunately, this Carfax doesn't go into massive details. And then let's have a look. Let's have a look. Where did we get to? Failed pass. Right. On the 17th of the 10th, 2014, at 167,442 miles, it passed another safety inspection. Hey. Let's have a look. On the 23rd of the 1st, 2015, registration issued or renewed, titled or registered as taxi, and passed a safety inspection, and that was also done. New York Motor Vehicle Department, Hollis, New York. On the 17th of the 2nd, 2015, so less than a month afterwards, with 193,543 miles, it failed the safety inspection. Wow, so a bit crap. On the 2nd of the 3rd, 2015, New Jersey damage reported. So it had been involved in another accident. Again, there's no details on what the accident may have been, but that happened in New Jersey. Can't quite work that out. So at some point it must have gone back in, failed safety inspection, passed safety inspection. Right, so it failed looking at this then, and then it passed straight afterwards with no more miles put on it. On the 16th of the 6th, 2015, bearing in mind it had 218,718 miles on it, it passed its safety inspection. On the 19th of the 10th, 2015, it 241,579 miles. Pass safety inspection, failed emission inspection. I'm surprised it passed the safety uh, inspection, looking at the state of it, to be fair, but I don't know what the standards are in New York. 
on the 19th of the 10th, 2015. So that's failed emission inspection. Oh, it suddenly passed emissions inspection and 241, 579 when it failed, 241, 635 when it passed. I don't understand how that works. Maybe somebody out there can tell me how the inspections are done, how often do they have to be inspected? Because it does seem that it's being inspected quite a lot, but it also seems to pass and fail. But there does seem to be a bit of a big mileage discrepancy between the fail and the pass. So in the UK here, if our vehicle fails an MOT, it can't be used on the road until the remedial work is carried out and then it can be retested past and you can use it. So if that is different in America, please let me know because I don't know. So on the 5th of the 2nd, 2016, registration issued or renewed, title or registered as a taxi, pass safety inspection, registration updated when owner moved the vehicle to a new location. And that took place at New York Motor Vehicle Department, Little Neck, New York. I don't know where that is. I'll have to look that up. On the 16th of the 2nd, 2016, it failed safety inspection, passed emission inspection. On the 17th of the 2nd, 2016, Sorry, I'm not putting the mileage on there, am I? So when it failed the safety inspection on the 16th of the 2nd, it had 259,292. And on the 17th of the 2nd, so the day later, it had 259,315. And that was when it's part, that was when it passed its inspection and the emissions. On the 1st of the 4th, 2016, New York damage reported. So I think it's only had three, yes, it has only had three accidents. So I would have said front definitely is one accident. The back is one accident. I'm not quite sure where the other accident would have been. To my knowledge, I know the two passenger doors were replaced because they were quite beaten. So they did have a spare set of doors that they fitted before it was shipped. And I do know both front fenders were replaced because they were full of rust. But I still have them and I say they were shipped over with the car as well. And they were just removed from another taxi. But I still have the original fenders so it was definitely wasn't that. So I'm not quite sure what the third accident would have been unfortunately. Which is a shame because I'd like to know what accidents it had. Who was involved, not who was involved but how much damage was there to the car etc etc sorry i'm going off on a tangent on the 16th of the 6th 2016 we passed another safety inspection and we passed an emission inspection with 281,542 miles on the 18th of the 10th 2016 with 299,063 miles, we passed again. And then on the 13th of the 1st, 2017, title or registered as a taxi, registration issued or renewed. So again, excuse my ignorance. Maybe somebody could confirm with me. So it's like, again, slightly different in the UK. You buy a car the title or the v5 document as we would call it registration document doesn't get renewed the only thing we would renew is the road fund license so we have to pay road fund license so i presume slightly different in america where you would have to replace the the registration or your road fund license if you like or the registration the license plate every so long the same as we do if somebody can clarify that for me as well that would be absolutely fantastic and again i've completely lost where i was however i can tell you oh no we got as far as there didn't we title registered so on the 15th of the second 2017 with 312,123 miles 
we pass another inspection and an emissions inspection, safety and emission inspection. On the 16th of the 6th, 2017, with 326,371 miles, we failed the safety inspection, but we passed the emissions inspection. And then on the same day, with an extra, what's that, uh, nine miles on it, we passed the safety inspection along with the emission inspection. We failed again on the 18th of the 10th, 2017, with 339,290 miles. Failed safety inspection, passed emission inspection, and then with another 12 miles on it on the same day, it passed safety inspection, passed emissions inspection. On the 16th of the 1st, 2018, registration was reissued. Title registered as a taxi, pass safety inspection. On the 15th of the 2nd, 2018, with 351,919 miles, it passed a safety and emissions inspection again. 15th of the 6th, 2018, it failed the safety inspection, but passed the emission inspection. And then with another 10 miles on it on the same day, 363, 945 miles, it passed the safety inspection, passed the emissions inspection. On the 17th of the 10th, 2018, it failed the safety inspection, but passed the emissions. And on the same day, with ooh, nine miles on it, it passed the safety inspection, and it passed the emissions inspection. On the 8th of the 1st, 2019, the registration issued or renewed, titled or registered as a taxi, passed safety inspection. On the 5th of the 2nd, 2019, with 377,481 miles, it passed the safety inspection and passed the emission inspection. On the 17th of the 6th, 2019, with 396,050 miles, it failed the safety inspection, but passed the emissions inspection. And on the same day, with another 12 miles on the clock, it passed the safety inspection and passed the emission inspection. So that was on the 16th, sorry, that was on the 17th of the 6th, 2019, and it had 396,000 and 62 miles which would explain because the car did not get retired from service until october i can't remember the precise date but it was retired in october so that would explain the, the discrepancy between the 396 and the 410,000 that i got it with i can't remember the precise date though which is a little bit frustrating but i did buy it on the same day that it retired because the chap that i brought it from really nice chap called mitchell he was an absolute legend. He delayed going on holiday to go with the chap that owned the car to have it taken out of service. And I got the pick of the four. Now, if you've watched my other video, I did say that I was meant to have had the best one out of the four. And I do have to be honest, this is a bit rough route. This is rough around the edges. So, I'm not quite sure what the other three were like. Now, I have managed to speak to a chap that owned one of the other cars that come out of this pack. There was four altogether. He has two taxis. One was one that I actually looked at before this one come up, and I decided to walk away from it because it had a really big engine rattle. And then he ended up with a 1M11, which was the original taxi I was meant to get, and then it all kind of got changed at the last minute for this one, which is 1M93. I don't know what happened to 1M12, and I believe 1M94 was potentially scrapped, which is a shame, because had I known that, I would have found the money and I'd have brought that one as well. So anyway, again, going off on a tangent, so this retired in October 2019. Mitchell delayed his holiday to go and get this and it ended up going back to his house. Now, he did ask if there was any rush for this car to be shipped over. And at the time I said, no, nope, not at all. 
appreciate you delayed going on holiday. So go and enjoy your holiday. As long as it's safe on your front garden, I'm quite happy for you to keep it there. So he said to me if I needed to get any bits, order any bits, get them put in the back of the car and have it all shipped over in one go, which we did. Unfortunately, we did hit a lot of problems. And again, if you watch my other video, it does explain about what happened. But just a brief recap. He come back from holiday in January 2020 from Mexico. Covid struck, which kind of put a bit of a downer on everything. Nobody was shipping. And then I believe it must have been about March or April. I got the go ahead from the shipping company to say, take it to the docks and there, get it loaded into a container and it can be shipped to the UK. We got it to the docks, we got it dropped off. Everything was looking good. And then unfortunately, Donald Trump, I believe was being investigated by customs or somebody. And unfortunately, he blocked anything being exported out of New York. So it sat dockside. I think it might have been April. And I think it sat dockside till the end of May when he finally said, OK, we can start shipping stuff again. And it got loaded up into container. And I think it got here in July. And it was quite rough. And even since coming here work has not stopped on this car so when i got it here the first thing i would have had to have done is convert it to uk use so by uk use i have to have amber turn signals at the rear and not red like american cars and unfortunately our amber turn signal has to be independent from the brake lights so I took the easier option. I managed to get hold of some very bright amber LEDs and cut some wires so that they now flash independently, which is absolutely fantastic. We have to have a rear fog light on our cars over here. We have to move the headlights over the best we can. And then we took it for MOT and it passed. I will say though, it didn't go for MOT straight away. So the UK have a rule that if a car is imported that is under 10 years old, it has to have an individual vehicle assessment, I think it's called, an IVA test, and then an MOT. So the IVA test, I know oh it's individual vehicle inspection, whatever it is, I, I can't remember what it's called. So basically that has to happen to any car under 10 years old to make sure it meets certain requirements. But anything over 10 years old, is fine and just have a normal MOT. So an IVA is a lot stricter than an MOT. They look at a lot of different things and they look in a lot more detail. And I really didn't want to go down that avenue because it is an absolute pain in the backside. So I sat on the car for a year. So it come here in 2020. I didn't take it for an MOT until 2021 to make sure it was past its 10 years. We got it MOT, so while it was there, a lot of work was done on it in respect of I had the, excuse the siren if you can hear it, I live next to a main road. We had the timing chains replaced because they were a little bit slack and a little bit rattly. I got a couple of oil leaks patched up, however, no sooner do I patch something up, it starts leaking from somewhere else down to the mileage. I'm sure I will eventually get round to getting everything sorted. Everything costs money. Nothing is available in this country for these cars. So everything has to be shipped in from the States. And nine times out of 10, it ends up costing more in the shipping than what it does to actually buy the part. I replace the power steering pump. I replace the pulleys. I replace the balancer. Since then, it's also had a... What do you call them? Mine's gone blank. <sighs> Completely blank. Intake manifold. That's the one I'm looking for. It's had a new intake manifold because it was smoking quite heavily. And again, you know, that didn't happen straight away. It was fine for a little while. Unfortunately, the car was parked up a little bit. So even after it had been MOT'd, we then have to send it away to get number plates or license plates for it. And our DVLA, which is the equivalent of your DMV, unfortunate if you're an American watcher, of course, 
um, unfortunately uh, were hiding behind or were still hiding behind COVID by saying, oh, it might take ages. And it did. It took nearly four months for me to get the paperwork and the registration number back for the car. Honestly, so frustrating. So the car sat around quite a lot. So my first proper drive of it, unfortunately, it just gasped out a load of smoke out the back. And that was when I had to have the intake manifold replaced. The intake valve also was a little bit, it didn't have one, and it's not called an intake valve, but I can't remember what it's called, and I'm making myself sound really silly now. So that was replaced. And then, of course, because everything likes to go wrong, brakes. They seized on because it had been sat up for so long. So I then had to order a load more parts because the e-brake had the cable had seized. And do you know how hard it is to try and find the correct cable for a long wheelbase? It's a nightmare. But I managed to find one. We're back up and running. Now, I am aware or I was aware that the floor on the passenger rear, which would have been curbside, is a little bit worse for wear and was a little bit soft on your foot. Unfortunately, I'm not the smallest of lads. And on Sunday, just gone, I accidentally stepped on it and put my foot through it. So, of course, I can't get any type of floor in the UK for this. I've had a quick scoot around on Rock Auto and I can't find anything on there. So, at the moment, it's due to go into the garage on Saturday. It's due an MOT or our inspection, as you would have in America. And the guys that have done all the work on it so far, they're going to cut it out. And we're going to have to make a floor to weld back in. So we'll see what that's like. But, but yeah, I, I just wanted to give you a little insight into this car. And if you are thinking of owning one in the UK, be prepared if you are going to have something like this it's been worked around the clock and they are really really tired and things are going wrong on them and this would be no different i know new york is quite salty so i'd imagine that would have not helped the flooring at all but we will get there we will get it to where i want it to be it's just going to take a little bit of time so please keep watching the videos if you are liking what you see if you're liking the content can I please ask to give me a subscribe? I'd really appreciate it. Give me a like, hit the bell so you know when I'm posting up new videos. I will try and make them entertaining. This is my second video that I've done with me talking. So I hope I'm coming across a little bit better than what I did on my first one. But let me know in the comments. Please give us a like, give us a subscribe, push the button, share me, do whatever you need to. Please, please, please. Look after yourselves. I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye.